Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Francis Murabula. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I was coming through Cape Town uh, Airport yesterday, I uh, was given a very great responsibility. And I believe that this responsibility was given to you as well. I was told that the future of this city is in my hands and in your hands too. And as I came to um, the hotel, as I arrived at the hotel, the instructions were even more uh, clear. So I would like to ask you, for how long did you shower today? How long did you shower today? I tried. I tried. And um, I was very um, anxious. Yeah, because when I opened the shower, the first uh, water, that, the water that was coming out first was very cold. So I spent 15 minutes, sorry, 15 seconds dancing around the water instead of showering. And then I thought, oops. Now, that is 15 seconds of my 120 seconds gone. So I've got just 105 seconds to shower. So that is how um, my experience was this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the need for sustainability in the world that we live in is real. And I'm so happy to discuss this topic in a city like this, where this need has been amplified so much that everywhere you go, we are told, please conserve water. Our city's life is on the line. I'm so happy that we can discuss this topic of sustainability in this city. But it's not just about water. It's also about the air that we breathe. It's about stopping and controlling pollution of the air that we breathe. It's also about land, yeah? Controlling the pol pollution of the land that we use so that agriculture may be sustained for our livelihood. It's also about controlling pollution of water masses that, uh, that, that uh, um, where marine ecosystems uh, um, are found so that we may have fish to sustain our livelihood. It's also about controlling the bigger ecosystem that supports our whole planet. It's about controlling uh, emissions and controlling and getting a hold of um, global warming. It's also about practical things in our societies, the societies that we live in. Gender equality, children's rights, and giving children a future through education and better health. Sustainability, indeed, is about all of these things. So today, we will uh, spend time just to look at what is the state of the planet and discuss why and how we can make our lives and our planet more sustainable, how we can make our businesses more sustainable. We will look at how to use SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, to achieve this aim. So before we dive into sustainability, let us look at what is the state of the world today. What is the state of our planet uh, in 2018? And to bring this to us, uh, we'll watch a video from one of the most authoritative forums in the world as far as analyzing the state of the world is concerned, identifying risks, and challenges that we face as humanity, 
and identifying solutions that can be implemented to address these risks. Let us watch a brief video from the World Economic Forum. The Global Risk Report is produced each year by the World Economic Forum in partnership with Marshall McLennan Companies. The report provides a rich perspective on the major challenges and risks facing the world, and its findings help set the agenda for the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. One key area of focus in the 2018 report is environmental dangers. Obviously, extreme weather, hurricanes, wildfires, but also risks from uh, air pollution and other sources. Second key area, geopolitical tensions rising and the concern of how protectionist sentiment could spill over into significant economic impact and also risks from emerging technologies, including a significant spike from cyber risk. So this year's report includes a new section on future shocks, which are 10 scenarios which we're not predicting are going to happen, but which potentially could happen and which I think help businesses with their contingency planning. Businesses have uh, traditionally used contingency planning for risks such as natural catastrophe risks. What the report this year highlights is that businesses could apply the same principles and approach to a wider class of risks, for example, cyber risk. Cyber risk, the approach has historically been mostly focused on prevention. We see increasing need to focus on response given the likely frequency of cyber attacks. So the report covers structural risk over the next decade. Environmental risks are very prominent on this horizon natural catastrophes and extreme weather being right at the top of the list. I think also there's a significant risk uh, in the technology sphere that goes beyond the short-term risk in cyber attacks, but into the longer-term structural unemployment that could arise from technology displacing jobs. Well, there isn't a lot of good news in the 2018 Global Risk Report, but there are a few bright spots. Technology innovation is one, sort of the flip side of technology risk, where in this case, technology advancement is creating opportunities for growth and productivity and increasing communication and connectedness amongst people. I encourage businesses to use this year's Global Risk Report as a reference point for identifying external threats to their company and how resilient the company is to them. The same risk could also stimulate thinking around what opportunities exist in the changing landscape. To learn more about the greatest challenges and opportunities facing the world today, read the 2018 Global Risk Report. Yeah, so that gives you a flavor of the state of the world today and the challenges that we face um, as a planet, as businesses, and as people, and what we need to do about, about them in order to address, in order to ensure that the future will indeed be better than uh, today, or at least not worse. So what is sustainability? There are many definitions of sustainability, but probably the most uh, widely accepted is this one from the Brutland Commission report of 1987, uh, which was commissioned by the United Nations, that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That's a very uh, encompassing definition of sustainability. And it is the aim, um, it should be the aim of all the people. Uh, in fact, indeed, as, as uh, the UN says, we, the people and businesses, to ensure that our actions of today do not compromise the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Actually, if we compromise the, the, the ability of future generations to meet their needs, it means we are compromising our own survival as business. Morgan Stanley extended this uh, definition to include um, strategies, behaviors, processes, tools, and technologies to ensure that indeed this aim can be uh, achieved. That is why we see that for true sustainability, we're going to see later on in this presentation, that for true sustainability, we need to invest 
in, in technologies that help us to ensure that we can address some of the big risks. Things like investing in clean energy, yeah? Things like investing uh, in technologies that ensure that we get, uh, we can get clean air, that we can control soil pollution. But is there a business case for business to wholeheartedly embrace sustainability? Indeed, whose job is it? Whose job is sustainability? As you have seen from the video and the nature of risks that we face as the planet and as humanity, sustainability cannot be the job of a single set of entities. Sustainability has got to be the job of everyone. Multilateral actions such as the Paris, uh, um, the Paris Accord are very, very important for galvanizing global action around the major structural, uh, structural frameworks that need to be achieved. Things like uh, the UN Global uh, Compact are truly uh, important for getting the whole world to, to have a common understanding uh, about what is to be done. Regulation is crucial to ensuring that all the people can comply in a single uh, country or a single jurisdiction can comply with what needs to be done. But probably the most important uh, contribution to sustainability in the future is going to be capital investment. Think about uh, global warming and the need to substitute fuel, uh, fossil fuels with uh, clean energy. That can only be uh, promoted through capital investment. And that is where business uh, comes in. Because 84% uh, of capital investment in the world, according to research, is controlled by business. So businesses are super important to the agenda of sustainability of the, of the planet. And by extension, the sustainability of business themselves. Uh, so um, you might ask, OK, if this is a compelling uh, reason, is there evidence? Uh, what is the evidence that we have that indeed sustainability pays? Research has shown that, research done by um, uh, Harvard and Morgan Stanley has shown that businesses that embrace sustainability uh, outperform financially businesses that do not by up to 46%. And operationally, 86% of businesses that embrace sustainability do well compared to those that do not. So there is clear evidence that uh, businesses, that sustainability is good for business. Indeed, as we say, doing good makes you do well. That is the present. What about the future? The future of business and investment lies in the hands of millennials. So Morgan Stanley uh, Institute for Investing started to research about millennials and what their orientation might be about uh, business in the future and how that might impact sustainability. And what they found is that 86% of millennials will invest in businesses that embrace sustainability. So it means that not only is sustainability good for business now, it is also good for business in the future. And research of CEOs of some of the top global companies uh, supports this. Indeed, the CEOs agreed that sustainability is not just good as a competitive advantage, but is going to be crucial for growth and for operational efficiency. 
So sustainability is good for business now and in future. Doing good will lead to doing well. So how might we achieve sustainability? One of the most comprehensive frameworks for sustainability in the world today is the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. The UN Sustainable Development Goals is 17 goals that range from poverty and hunger to providing health care and education to protecting marine life um, to ensuring the right kind of innovation uh, to support the world, to ensuring equality in society, to ensuring justice and peace in the world. So it's a comprehensive set of goals that is meant to protect the people uh, and the planet to ensure that we can continue to achieve prosperity in the days to come. It's a set of 17 goals and 169 targets and over 200 indicators. It's indeed the most comprehensive uh, framework for anyone, any business, any country uh, that wants to embrace sustainability in a wholehearted manner. And the good thing is that this framework provides clear indicators that can, be transferred, uh, that can be transferred from one environment to, to another. For business, the Sustainable Development Goals provides an opportunity to put people and the planet alongside profit. It provides a framework for business to redefine purpose and not just profit. For what is the purpose of business anyway? Yeah? Uh, in the 70s, the purpose of business was defined as making profit for the shareholders. But that is not the definition for the world we live in today. The purpose of business is to po positively impact and grow the societies that that business operates in. Because that business gets its legitimacy, its license to operate from those particular societies. And the actions of that business must, uh, must protect and grow the societies in which those businesses operate. So the purpose of business is quite different in definition from what it was uh, in, the sub in the 70s. And the SDGs provide an opportunity to redefine the purpose of business in a balanced manner alongside profit. Indeed, the SDGs provide a framework to define values over just value. So the SDGs is the most comprehensive framework for any business that wants to impress sustainability in a balanced, wholehearted manner. But what is, the, what, is, what is the logical way or the logical steps that a business might follow to use SDGs for sustainability? The first step is to identify what we call material matters for the business. This is now, this is a bit of sustainability language when we talk about material matters. But material matters just means the things that can affect operational, uh, can affect the performance of that uh, business, that can affect its reputation, or affect its license to operate. And license to operate in this case is not just the official sort of license that comes from a regulator or a government, but the legitimacy of that business in society. The second step is to align the strategy of the business 
and material matters to the SDGs. Let's take um, a business like hospitality, like the environment we are in. A material matter might be the food supply chain, yeah? And the need to ensure that all the things that come through its supply chain are, are traceable and not uh, harmful to the, to the customers who may consume its food or stay in its environment. So that may be a material matter. A material matter for a business in Cape Town may be water supply. Yeah? A material matter for a telecommunication company may be um, maybe uh, emissions from its towers. So, the, so after identifying the material matters and merging it with strategy, you then align those uh, with the SDG framework. And we'll look al at a little bit of detail how that can be done. Number three, define actions from uh, operations and set targets. Just like the SDGs have got targets, it's also important to set targets for the business. Number four, make it everyone's business. As we have seen, the business of sustainability is indeed everyone's business. Yeah? It's the business of the world. It's, it's the business of countries. It's the business of business. And it's the business of people inside the business. When we talk about uh, save water, it can be a business uh, target, but in the end, it's down to the individual as well. Number five, track and report to society. In the business of sustainability, accountability is the number one priority. We have got to be uh, accountable, not just to internal stakeholders, but to the world at large, because indeed sustainability is, a, is the business of all of us in the world. There are a number of companies that have followed this uh, methodology and um, are reaping a lot of benefit yeah, and recording success by following this methodology and the SDG framework. This is just a sample of all of them. Uh, actually, these are the top 10 of the top 100 sustainable businesses for 2017. And now I will take you through um, a brief case study of one Africa company, one African company that is also watch, walking this path. Uh, it's not yet one of the top 100, but uh, it's a local company that is walking this path and using the SDG framework. And then we'll see how practical it is to actually use the SDGs framework to achieve uh, the goals that are embraced in uh, sustainability. Uh, this company is Safaricom. It's a Kenyan company uh, with listed on the Nairobi Stock Exchange with public government, uh, government and international shareholding. Uh, it is in the telco business, so it does standard telco business, uh, e-commerce, and financial services. Its uh, purpose is to transform lives, and that means the lives of the society in which it operates. Its strategy is exemplified by just three uh, aspects. One is customer first, relevant, um, producing relevant products, and excellence in operations. Its material matters are regulatory environment, innovation, uh, the quality uh, of uh, the quality of its ne network, and energy consumption. Energy consumption because it, it runs a very large network and therefore it's a big consumer of energy. Safaricom aligned its material matters and its strategy and identified that out of the SDGs, these are the nine most relevant 
Yeah? Number one, a quality, um, good health, education, obviously are important. If you are going to transform the lives of a society, this cannot be left behind. Um, innovation, that is how a telco survives. Reduced in, uh, inequalities, very critical if you are going to transform uh, the lives of people in a society. Responsible consumption and production, very critical because a telco obviously produces a lot of waste and therefore things like recycling are critically important. Peace, justice, and strong institutions, very important uh, because a sustainable business must of necessity be an ethical business. It must be a transparent business. And partnerships for goals, yes, very important because it's almost impossible for a single entity to achieve resounding success if it does not cooperate within the, within the ecosystem that it operates. So this is how um, Safaricom overlaid um, its strategy, uh, material matters, onto the SDG framework. And uh, one interesting observation is by doing this, Safaricom discovered untapped opportunity in the areas of education and agriculture. Again, uh, emphasizing the fact that if you do good, you will do well, because it discovered additional business in these areas. So what have been the results? What has Safaricom achieved by embracing the SDG framework? Uh, but before I go to that, I could give you just a quick run of some of the things that it has done. Number one, uh, it has set itself a target to be a net zero uh, company, a net zero business by initially 2030, but that has been revised now to, sorry, initially 2050, that's been revised to 2030. Net zero uh, emissions com uh, business. Number two is implemented waste recycling. Over 90% of its waste is now recycled. Number three, it's uh, embraced um, equality, um, uh, reducing e inequalities in many, many aspects. For example, uh, it has launched an initiative to promote women-owned businesses um, in its own business. So creating specific procurement opportunities for women-owned business. And that is transforming a whole, uh, a, a whole constituency by itself. Um, it has enhanced things like health and safety. Um, it, has, uh, it has created an initiative to promote the well-being of employees in its supplier ecosystem by ensuring that those suppliers uh, treat their employees well and they, they, they pay a, a living wage, not just uh, a minimum wage. So what has been the benefit? Um, KPMG has done an independent audit on the company and found that uh, the true value uh, of this company to, to society is actually 10 times what its earnings are. Again, uh, which goes to emphasize that uh, sustainability can create real value uh, for the society. So, that, uh, in a nutshell, is why we must have sustainability, why as businesses we need to be more sustainable, why everyone needs to lend a hand, and how we can do it through the SDGs. So before I conclude, I will leave you with a quote from Jane Goodall, which says, you cannot get through a single day without having Im an impact on the world around you. What you do, whatever it is, makes a difference. And you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.